Hi guys, welcome to another Learn Electronics Repair video. I found this at the weekend at the car boot sale. And the reason I bought this was a bit of a nostalgia trip to be honest, because I used to own one almost exactly the same as this in the 1970s. Uh, it was a Christmas present, probably about 1973 or thereabouts. I had it 73, 74 and I had it till sometime in uh, 1977 when he packed in <laughs> and I took it to the local shop and uh, they quoted me something like £25 to repair it which might not sound a lot now but in the 1970s that was rather a lot of money so that was the end of it and uh, then I saw this thought hey that's just like the one I had so you know how it is sometimes when you see something that you owned and loved and you just want to, to buy it just to see if I can uh, do a better job of repairing it if it's faulty than the uh, other one. Um, there is something wrong with it and that's this. So it has a mechanical problem and as much as the thing jumps off and it looks like there's like a little plastic stud here and it's broken on this one so whether that can be repaired that's a Carlos retro upgrade uh, thing Carlos mate can you do anything with that so that that's obviously a problem with it but we can sort of work it without that so I have this uh, faulty cassette it must be faulty because it has pink Floyd on it so that in itself was probably a problem me being a soul man and all that, you know, nothing really against Pink Void, apart from the fact I don't like it. Uh, so, oh, well, <laughs> obviously it's not going to work, and I don't have any batteries in this anyway. But we've got a, a main supply on these, so these actually plug direct into the mains, although they were battery powered. So, uh, we can just stick a wire in that, I think, and we'll stick it on the light bulb current limiter. And let's see if it actually works. You can see the model number. I just did a quick uh, Google for this, and they're actually quite collectible. I didn't see any of them that were in the original leather case, or faux leather case, or whatever it's made of. And this is the original one, I'm sure, because it's exactly like the one I had. Um, these connectors have been around longer than you might think. Uh, they were there in the 70s, so we can stick that in there. And we can uh, plug this in and let's see, let's see what it does. So I'll put the uh, current limiter on, I'll put the camera over there so it's up there, but you probably won't see it do anything, even if it's working. I doubt it's going to draw much current. So let's plug it in. Well, let's switch it on. Well, it didn't draw any current. Does it do anything? Oh, okay, so it makes a buzzing noise. It rewinds. Well, there's continual sort of noise. But it doesn't play. And it fast forwards very slowly. So even though it's doing that, there's no oh. okay. So it has a, a rather loud buzzing noise, and it sort of plays, which has a mechanical problem, obviously. And I think we can just. Uh, Give it a bit of help. Actually, that probably sounds about right for Pink Floyd. <laughs> I think it wants a bit of TLC, guys. What do you think? <laughs> okay, let's uh, open it up and let's see what we've got. It took a bit of uh, extracting from the uh, case. I kind of had to like, peel it off, sort of, inside out to get it off. It doesn't damage it, so we have that. Um, obviously, this takes batteries. 
rather fortunately I would say there's no batteries actually in it uh, there's a switch here what says 117 or 220 but isn't fitted um, so it looks like there's yeah a couple of screws in there and possibly one underneath this little plastic thing here and there's a screw there so there's a few screws and hopefully the back will come off then we can have a look what's inside it I was messing with the electronics in the 70s at the time I had one of these but I wasn't really repairing the electronics I was at the point where like building little projects which generally didn't work probably mostly because I hadn't got the right parts so I just sort of made it up as I went along yeah found the circuit diagram and stuff other stuff in it <laughs> but anyway, I, I built a few things that worked so you know don't get me wrong some things actually worked yeah but they were probably the exceptions I mean you know I, I, was, I was young I was young young and inexperienced okay so they are out looks like i might have to undo these two as well because it's kind of been held on by this and there doesn't seem to be much uh, spare wire in there actually no they don't pull them done not easily so we have to yeah a bit of broken plastic the obligatory ah oh, that's the bit that's broken off the uh, cover that's uh we'll keep hold of that that's the bit as is broken off the off, off this yeah that's, that's the missing bit from this okay i'll stick it out can we get inside it can we get, can see inside it oh well. Hold on, something's, ha something's happening. Something is happening. Something's holding this down here that I can't quite uh, figure out what it is. It's uh, holding in place. Mm -hmm. That's a Chinese puzzle, guys. Probably actually a Japanese puzzle. <laughs> More likely. But it's, it's a a bit of a conundrum there, what's stopping it from uh, coming apart? Yeah, it looks uh, like my original thought was correct, that I need to get the this connector off the side and there's just nuts on one side, so it was just spinning, that's why it wouldn't actually uh, come off from the other side, so uh, I'll probably have to just find something to hold these nuts still. Try the finger end first. Yeah, it's just rotating. There's bits of glue on them. So I think it's going to be a matter of slipping the uh, long loose pliers down here to get hold of the uh, nuts. And then see if we can uh, undo the screws. This is so fiddly, it makes me think there's actually a better way to do it. And I don't have the way, basically. But one way or another, this needs to come off, and so does the other one. Go on. So let's see if that'll have it. Now again, I can see the thing spinning. That might be a bit more like it. Yeah, I think I might have actually got it. Okay, so we just do the same with the other one. Yeah, that did the trick. So I'm inside it now. So we have one small PCB, um, a switch in a rather strange place. What does that do? Oh, I wonder if this is like 110 volts and yeah, that thing, probably. Um, I think what's wrong with this, you know, is like the elastic band's gone basically, so it looks like there's only one motor, but this is like, can you see it, it's like loose, yeah, I think that's probably what the problem is there, 
Um, four uh, C type batteries. And uh, yeah, we used to. <laughs> I mean, when we were kids, you know, we couldn't afford batteries for these things. We used to uh, go out on the pushbacks looking for road bricks, I'll confess to this. So you'd find the road bricks, they have like these orange flashing lights down the side of the road bricks, a little tripods, yeah. And inside each one of them were two of these six volt batteries with like springy terminals on and we used to uh, effectively connect uh, wires you know length of wire on this and we used to go out and nick them batteries out of them things they had like a funny like round thing you, you could do with the screwdriver the way you could actually undo the thing and when you took it off you could just take the batteries out and two of them would keep you going for like a month with one of these probably or more yeah <laughs> so that's how we used to run them that's how we used to do it well, I mean, said that. I mean, in them days, you know, like you get like about ten pence to get to the bus to six from college each way, you know. And my mum would give me like fifteen p a day along with the bus, twenty pence a day. And I used to, <laughs> and I wasn't the only one. We used to walk over the fields forty minutes each way to the college, so we could save all the twenty pences up. And at the end of the week, we got a quid, yeah. And you could go out with that. <laughs> and you strap on your shoulder with this with your, your battery and your, and your satchel on your back yeah, or your adidas bag yeah. them were the days guys honestly oh. <laughs> this thing's bringing this all back to me so now I've written about that for a bit and I've put the switch back where it was I've switched it off let's uh, plug this in again the light bulb comes with it Let's uh, see when you start it playing, and then, uh... oh, well now it makes a noise, doesn't it? Now it makes a noise. Why is it making a noise? That's with no taping. Okay, let's turn it down a bit. Oh, oh, I bet that's feedback somehow into the recording. So I have no tape in. And what I notice now is the um, thing is actually turning, yeah. I reckon what's wrong with this is that rubber band for the first problem. Put that on tape in again. Okay, so, yeah, the motor's spinning. You feel the motor spinning. But these are not turning. So we get a bit of tension on So that's the... That's the first problem with this guys, that, that's what's wrong with that. So we need a rubber band, that's the first thing we need a rubber band. The second thing I remember on these is what regulated the speed of the tape. So basically the cassette you can get it out. Stop the play button. So down in here is like a little uh, rubber wheel. And it, Presses against the spindle, so the spindle rotates. So this spindle is, goes through a hole. So the spindle's on one side of the tape, and then this rubber wheel here presses against the tape. Yeah, it pinches between the two, and it's the pressure of that little rubber wheel that actually keeps the tape going at a constant speed. And usually, the best thing to do with this was to clean the little rubber wheel. And if you got really worn out, you could take the little rubber rubber tire off it turn it inside out and put it back on it lasts a while longer then so that probably was a clean now what was going on with this loud buzzing noise let's have another look i wonder if we will try it off the main power again and then we can also drive up the battery well i haven't any batteries but i put my bench power supply on it which i know is a nice smooth voltage supply and i was wondering if the humming or the buzzing noise 
was coming from the fact that this capacitors are bad on, on the mains input, you know, like mains form. Quick eight, we turned on. We're sort of playing. That's turning the tone control up. Okay, make strange noises. Let's try it off the uh, bench power supply and see if we get less noise. Okay, so I've attached the battery, well, I've attached my bench power supply on 6 volts. I've got it on to play. And now it doesn't make the strange humming noise. And if we can get the thing running at a sensible speed, <laughs> it sounds about right for Pink Floyd. Okay, guys, so the nasty noise is basically there when it's on the main power. Um, there's a bit of a dodgy connection down here, actually. No, it's not a dodgy connection. It's just where the uh, screen's cable comes in uh, here. Goes to the... Uh, wherever it goes to. Yeah. So... I'm thinking, I mean, there's a capacitor down here. I can see two rectifier diodes down here. So it's possible this is like a just a single voltage supply, I would think. Um, so I'm going to see if there's a problem with this main capacitor first. If it's still having a problem on the main supply, then I'll look at other ones. But imagine that is probably doing the main smoothing for when the main supply pliers on the 220 volts so that's got to be the place to go for first so let's we get this little PCB out and let's have a look I have the PCB out I mean we can just look at this there's two orange wires and those quite clearly go to the transformer in fact it looks like there's a uh, orange oranges are black as well yeah there might be a center tap um, but that sent tap that actually that goes to one end of this capacitor here and there's another orange wire which comes from here which goes off down to the uh, front somewhere over here there's also some sort of jack here mm. oh this might be i don't know remote and mic i remember the remote on the microphone you had like a little on off switch which you could effectively switch it well you could pause it and play it or switch it on and off that's what that was full and the orange wire yeah comes down to this thing so i'm guessing that's something to do with that which was that one um there's another orange wire which goes to uh, oh yeah that's like a switch on here uh, which is effectively switches between battery and uh, main power by the looks of it yeah so when you when you connect your power lead into here I'll just unplug. when you put this into here it obviously it breaks that contact or something or makes it it does something there yeah actually that seems to be jammed to me I'm not sure it's actually doing anything yeah you'd assume that that actually opens the contact uh so first of all i'm going to look at this capacitor and have a look to see if it's any good if that's a good capacitor then we'll have to have it on the main circuit board and see what else we can see so let's uh unsolder this one first i'll probably have to take the orange wire off to do it that's not uh, going to be a problem is it so we can just uh, yeah, take the orange wire off I could use the uh, vacuum tool, but I'm fairly sure 
I can just get this out actually just by effectively just pushing it to one side and hitting one leg so it tilts and then uh, go back the other way yeah that's it you see out it comes positive as to the end where the orange wire was and we can use a bit of solder braid just to uh, clean that up okay I mean this thing you know is like best part of 50 years old and it's fundamentally working so look at this uh, capacitor on the uh, inductance sorry on the ESR and capacitance meter I mean these will not be low ESR I'm just wondering how this thing reads after practically 50 years so here's the ESR meter just uh, zero it so just connect the two leads together and hit the zero button okay it's zeroed let's see how this capacitor reads Well, actually, surprisingly, that reads pretty low for ESR, yeah. I mean, you would not call that a bad capacitor. How does it read for capacitance? You get the uh, capacitance meter. Well, actually, that's telling us that's a good capacitor. That is saying that is fine. Surprising, maybe, but that is telling us that is fine. I'm going to put this back in and I'm going to just try and strap another capacitor across it in circuit just to see if it improves that situation with the background uh, noise. If that makes no difference, then we need to have a look on the other PCB and see what else we can find. But I think that just goes to show actually, even the capacitor 50 years old. And this has probably been sitting in storage for a long time, I would think, as well. And yet it actually fundamentally is a good capacity. So let me just uh, clean this up a little bit. I can get it back in. Just uh, a bit of solder on this again then. We'll uh, see. Okay. Of course this was built in the days where we had proper solder as well. There we go. So that's on and then I'm going to strap another capacitor across this one temporarily to see if it gets rid of that background noise okay it's on there let me just find another capacitor but this actually is the same value as this one so you can see how things have changed a little bit since the thing was built in the 70s. I've just put a bit of solder on it, so we'll just uh, tag it on here. And I want to see whether or not this makes a difference, even though the one reads okay. Orange wire fell off, that's not going to be a problem. Okay. So that's on there. Let's now connect it back up on the uh, mains supply and see if we've still got this uh, noise. Okay, we've got the mains on. Let's just uh, switch this on again and see what it does. Yeah, we still have that noise. It doesn't really sound like mains noise either to me, that does. And it's not actually driving the tape. So, so. Yeah, so the motor's spinning. The noise is there. Let's just uh, put a bit of tension on this again. Yeah, I'd say that's helped it a little bit. Um, 
but they're still making a little bit of a noise. But it makes me wonder just how silent this actually was, to be quite honest, when it was uh, new, you know, <laughs> whether or not really there was always some noise. Let's um, have a look at just cleaning up this other wheel as well. Let's see how it plays. And after that, I think really I need to find an elastic band for this. So, as I mentioned before, we have a spindle here and a little rubber wheel that rubs against it. So I'll take a bit of uh, ISO and just give this thing a clean. Yeah, there's all sorts of gunk on it, as you can see, coming off on the end of the cotton bud. So we need to get all this off here. Okay. I think that's fairly uh, clean now and then the little rubber wheel that runs against it so probably the easiest way to do this is put it into the play position I'll keep the wheel still and then we can just uh, clean this up as well with more of it. Aye, so let's turn it round a little bit This is the sort of thing I could actually do when I was in my early teens, <laughs> actually. <laughs> I could do this amount of repair work on the cassette recorder. I think we all could, you know, I think everybody knew how to do this. So probably you guys, I'm teaching you nothing today. Probably teaching you nothing, it's just a nostalgia trip, yeah. Or for some of you, a voyage of discovery. How life was in the 70s. Okay. Still coming off, I'll get another uh, stick and clean it a little bit more. I'll wet it again and then we can uh, use the other end, the dry end. Okay. It looks fairly clean now, actually, to me. Okay. And again, I'm coming from this with a dry one. Yeah, there's not much dirt coming off that now. Okay. Let's give that a go and see if that now plays any more stable than it did before. Right, so uh, it's switched on. Again, this is needs tension to make it work. I think until we fix this rubber band problem, we're not going to have any obvious indication that it's working. I'm sure you can see it's rattling, yeah, the belt rattling. Yeah. So basically, I need a big rubber band. I need a big rubber band for this. So, let's see if it should hopefully just one way or another. So just, no, it's probably on the spindle that is. I'm guessing you have to lift this metal uh, bracket off to get this off. Let's, uh, and it's spring loaded here as well. Uh, let's see if we just loosen it and maybe I'll just tilt it up a little bit and uh, everything's not gonna fall apart. And I might just be able to uh, just take this rubber band out of it. No, it's not that simple. Do the same with this one. A little bit of, a little bit of play in it now. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need. You just slight loosening and the band's off. So, I need one of them. That's what I need. I might have some... Uh, drive belt so yeah look at my stash of goodies yeah well i did have some so i do have some but i honestly can't figure out where they are i mean another thing we should do with these i'm not sure if it's all help at all 
was effectively to turn it inside out. Okay, so we turn, we effectively rolled the thing over so it was inside out in an attempt to get a bit more tension out of it. Whether that will help this, I don't know because it seems to be quite loose to be quite honest in my opinion. But we can try it. Okay, so that now, I just follow it around. Yeah, I've turned it inside out. It's a bit more circular-ish. Let's see if that actually uh, helped any whatsoever. I need to get over the back of this one, and I might have to use the. Uh, I might have to take the circuit board off actually to do it. Yeah, let's uh, let's have a quick look at what we got on here while we're at it. Let's have a look at what we have. Out of interest, yeah. Out of nostalgia, what have we got on this PCB? Okay, let's have a look. Well, it doesn't easily want to lift up, that's for sure, because of the wires going down to the uh, tape heads. Now, which I'll show you something actually in a minute. Uh, but let's uh, let's see. Okay, we can now at least get us onto the roller. So that's the other way round. I'm not convinced it's going to make a lot of difference, but we can we can certainly try. Let's put us back on here. We're on. Let's give that a go. Oh, I was making funny noises again. Turn the uh, volume down. It's not driving. So turning that inside out didn't really help. And it has some instability. I'm suspecting this probably has quite a lot of problems with capacitors. Let's try it on the power supply again. Well, <laughs> whatever I've done taking this PCB off, it didn't it didn't like it, yeah, listen. I've definitely caused that some problems. Okay, so it does not like that. Um, what have I done to it? That's the question. What have I done to it? Just, uh... Done, it doesn't like it, yeah. Okay, so I've obviously disturbed something just by lifting this. The most obvious would be one of the connections somewhere, there's something loose, maybe. Don't see anything. Well, all these wires seem to be fastened on okay. Go again. Nope. Nope. We'll have to lift this off again, guys. <laughs> <laughs> That's one way to make it worse, isn't it? Make it worse than before. So, uh, see if we can get at this thing at all. Uh, 
how to make things worse than they were, eh? Oh. Well, it obviously is not easy to get to the other side of here. I think you can sort of see what's on it now. Which is basically uh, plenty of transistors and capacitors. Is it just why going to value? Is it going to make a difference? Yeah. Let's switch it back on. Let's start it playing again. Let's just, uh, hold this. Put the cassette back in. Well, clearly there's a bad connection here somewhere. Trying to figure out where it is. Yeah, flexing the board. You know, I'm going to clean this with isopropyl and see what it does. A bit more isopropyl alcohol. And a little paintbrush. Let's, uh, let's just give us a good clean. I mean, you've no idea what deposits might have got on this over the years. Let's see whether this actually makes uh, any difference for the, for the good or for the bad, yeah? <laughs> Let's see if it actually improves the situation or not. Okay. There. There's also a large switch here, which I suspect is to do with the uh, play and record feature. So I'm also going to put some uh, switch cleaner down inside this as well. I mean, that's another quite possible uh, problem. So I have some of uh, this stuff uh, in Spanish, uh, limpiador de contactos. Uh, yeah, contact cleaner, okay. So let's uh, give this a good uh, blast. Because I'm a bad uh, connection on this thing, actually. Let's go on the other end. Okay. So give that a clean as well. And also, obviously, a lot of this while it's drying out. And then I think we have a reasonable chance, maybe, of this actually working now. In which case, it just wants an elastic band. Okay, let that dry out. That's uh, dried out now. Let's see what it does. Put the power supply back on. You get the thing spinning. Is it making howling noises? No. That's fixed the howling noises. I mean, it makes sense. This is switching between record and play. And I suspect if one or two of the contacts are not making so the circuit effectively is in some parts of it set to record and some parts set to play or just not connected you would get that sort of feedback that kind of makes sense okay so uh, it's working we seem to solve the problem with the feedback and somewhat the problem with the noise 
The only thing I have to ask now really is, well, is nostalgia what it used to be? That's the question. Is nostalgia what it used to be? Having played with this, I don't know, but I had to buy it just because I owned one when I was a kid. And I'll probably find an elastic band and uh, get it working. And then I'll just go in the cupboard. <laughs> just to remind me every time I see it. Hey, I had one of these when I was a kid. Yeah, that's going to be priceless, I think. Really. It's going to be priceless, guys. Okay, that was uh, a short video. It's the weekend. So uh, have a good weekend, guys. I'll probably be down at the flea market again on Sunday. And I'll see you all soon on another Word Electronics Repair video. Ciao for now, guys.